Okay. Do you have any idea what problem numbers they were? Oh, I should have written them down. Let's start around here, see what happens. That's just subtraction. Oops, get back here. I think one was 44. Is that one? Mine, well, mine was in the 30s. That one was ticking me off, too. Okay. I it was a 25 story hotel instead of a five. Oh, sure. That one I got 25 boxes. Five story hotel has 40 rooms on each floor. The owner has pr was uh, purchasing 25 boxes of curtain at a discount. If there are 13 sets of curtains in each box, can the owners replace one set of curtains in every room of the hotel? Okay. Well, I was so, it too fast. I thought it was a 25 story hotel. Well, sure. And they were buying <laughs> So you've got five stories times 40 rooms, that's 200 rooms. Okay. Uh, 25 yeah. times 13. Yeah. So it's less, so no, there's not enough. Oh, I know better than use my mouse. My mouse button sticks. So. 25. Okay, yeah, so there is enough. Yeah, your numbers will be, will be different. Yeah. 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 Let's see what else comes up here. This is one that catches people a lot too. Zero divided by six. The quotient is zero. Yes. Yes, very much so. Um, in fact, that's something I should go over at the beginning of class, is the dividing by zero thing. So here's the, the ones you're looking at, the remainders. Right. So what if I were to do this on the calculator? 7,973 divided by 8. Well, if you do it on the calculator, it's going to give you 996.625. Right. So that's telling you that the number is 996. That part we know. Are you guys not able to see my computer screen on your end? No. No, it's not coming through? Or is it just the extra projector isn't on? I don't think the projector is on. OK. You may have to find somebody to get that turned on for you. Because, yeah, I'm, I'm sending content right now, so oh, I may have to resend it once they turn it on. Okay, so anyway, you got that 996, and I got to get out of there. There's it's not no remainder. There is a remainder. So we got the 996 off the calculator. How do we get the remainder out of that? Well, we're going to just take 996 times that 8 again. That's 7968. Oh, Out of 7973, how much is left? Great. Yeah, uh, I was getting really upset. I didn't even think that. And so that means there's five left. left. Yeah. Oh, my God. It's so simple, and I was getting so aggravated and didn't even think about it. So if you're using the calculator, you have to work it backwards. And there's a couple, there's a couple ways you can do it. So that's one way you could do it was to do it like that. The other way you could do it is this. You could do the 7973 divided by 8 and get that same answer again. And then just do this. Minus the part in front of the decimal point, the 996. So you decimal of 0.65, you multiply that back by 8, it'll give you how much was left over, the 5. Oh, cool. So that's the other way you could do that on the calculator. But a lot of people look at that and say, oh, 996.6, that must mean the remainder is 6. It's not. It's after the decimal point, it's not the remainder. It's the remainder divided by what you're dividing by. Yeah. So like you said, if you just multiply that, you get the... Yeah. yeah. yeah I was so here, 923 divided by 40. So let's do that. 923... Oops. Let me do that. 923... 
divided by 40 gives us 23.075. So again, 23 is the whole number portion of that. The remainder takes a little work. So the easiest way for me is to do the second method. I'm just going to subtract off the 23 and then multiply that decimal by 40 again. So it's a remainder of 3. So that's one spot where the calculator actually almost gets in the way if you don't know yep. how to finagle it. Now, some of you have fraction buttons on your calculator. The fraction button on your calculator can actually help you do remainders as well. Some of you will have an ABC key on your calculator. If you have that ABC key, rather than entering that in as division, you can use that ABC key. So like here, this one is 16,327 divided by 26. Oh, I didn't see this right, did I? Come on. Okay, so 16,327 divided by, what was it again, 26. If you have that ABC key on your calculator, you can do 16,327, then press ABC and then 26 and hit equals, and it'll actually reduce it. What it'll give you, now I don't have that button on this calculator. You get 627 times the 26. So it's 2526. So it's going to give you something like that. 627 and 2526. Well, that is saying is that is 627 with a remainder of 25. And then A, B, C instead of divide. Now you do have to be careful with that. You have to make sure that the denominator of your fraction is still what you were dividing by. Because if this happened to be 24 as a remainder, it will reduce it to 12 thirteenths instead of 24, 26. So that might not be the easiest way to do it for some people. If you're not good with fractions, that might not be the best way to do it. But it is one way of going about it. But again, if we were just to do this on the calculator, 16, 327, divided by 26, and I get that decimal. Well, again, I can just subtract. I know 627 is my whole number. I can subtract off that 627, then multiply back by the 26, and I get 25 as my remainder. Got the projector on. It just won't send the signal now. Okay. And that's a very typical mistake that people will make is they'll just take that first digit after the decimal point and use that as the remainder. Right. Yeah. Yep. Or trying to round it up, but yeah. it actually it yeah. worked once. <laughs> yep. <laughs> We're good? Okay. So for those of you who couldn't see what we were doing here, what we were talking about is when we have these problems like this in my math lab where it's asking us to divide it out and leave a remainder, how do you get that on your calculator? So like this one here, 16,327 divided by 26. If we punch that in our calculator, 16,327 divided by 26, our calculator gives us a decimal, not a remainder. Well, the part that's in front of the decimal there, the 627, is the whole number part of our answer. To get the remainder, though, requires a little bit of work. 
So I'm gonna, what I'm going to do is I'm going to subtract that 627, and so I just have the decimal part, portion left. So I've got that 0.96153. And then I'm going to take that, I'm going to multiply it back by what we divided by in the first place. We divided by 26, so I'm going to multiply that by 26. What that's telling us is there's 25 left over. So if we had 16, 327 divided by 26. I'm just going to do it up by hand to verify that that works. So 26 goes into 163 six times. 26 times 6 is 156. Subtracting that off leaves us with 7. We can bring down that next digit, which is 2. 26 goes into 72 twice. 2 times 26 is 52, so there's 20 left over. Bring down the 7. 26 goes into 207, I would say 7 times. So that's going to be 2, 4, 14, 182. So that is 25 left over. That is your remainder. So it does work out. Any qu you know, other questions off of the homework that you want me to go over before we move on? The very last question. 58. The very last question. Oh, that was a fun one. No, it wasn't. <laughs> Apparently, we have different ideas of fun. So 17 times, 12, 17 times 7 minus 4. Three to the third minus three times two to the third. Plus seven. Now again, the numbers you had are probably different than mine because the computer randomly <coughs> generates it. But remember, we have our order of operations. Step one is in closing symbols. So we are going to have to start in the parentheses. Now inside there, we still have to follow order of operations. Are there any other enclosing symbols? Uh, three, three power. Well, that's not an enclosing symbol. That would be the next step. The next level is exponents. So yes, then we do have to do exponents next. We have two of them, 3 to the third power and 2 to the third power. If there's more than one thing at the same level, we go left to right. So 3 to the third power. Now we really haven't gone over powers yet, so it's getting a little bit ahead of ourselves. But 3 to the third power is 3 times 3 times 3. That's 27. So we take out that 3 to the third power and we replace it with 27. And the rest of the problem is going to stay exactly the same. So now we're still working in those parentheses. We have another exponent, 2 to the third power, which is 2 times 2 times 2, or 8. So we replace that 2 to the third power with an 8. And everything else in the problem stays the same. Now we are still inside that parentheses. There are no more exponents. What's the next step? Multiplication or division, so we've got to do the 3 times 8. Replace that with 24. Still working inside the parentheses. 27 minus 24 is all that's left. That is 3. Now we've reduced the parentheses to a single number, so we don't need the enclosing symbol anymore. What do we have to remember to do, though, now when we take out those parentheses? Multiply. Yeah, that is multiplication there. It's four times the parentheses. So now, again, we have to go back through our levels of priority again. Are there any other enclosing symbols? No. Any more exponents? No. No powers or roots. So we're down to multiplication or division, and we're going to go left to right. 17 times 7. 119, 
The rest of the problem stays the same yet. Next, we need to do 4 times 3, which is 12. The rest of the problem does not change. And now we just have to do, we're down to addition and subtraction, so we're going to go <laughs> left to right. So 119 minus 12 is 107. And 107 plus 7 is 114. Any other questions off the homework? Yeah. Okay, I'm going to say.